Hello, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today is another art journal day. Yee! And it's also going to be Think Outside of the Box Challenge. Miss Ki Young has issued a challenge of using paper towel or toilet paper pieces. Well, these pieces used to lay in the bottom of my splat box. That's Tim Holtz uses a splat box, but I use just an old cardboard box and I would line the bottoms with this. Well, I have these different shades and textures and colors and oh, it's it's kind of like a Mod Podge, but I'm going to use those in my background on my uh, page along with this. I've sprayed these as well with you know, usually vintage photo, a little walnut stain. Uh, and then this was an older one that I had actually smeared some paint on. So I may do that after I've got my background created. So that is the plan for today. My other pieces and parts I'm working in is right here. Um, I made these the other day and I was just playing around with backgrounds. Well, these, these are some of my family. Anyhow, um, this one. I had gotten this resist spray and had never used it. And so I got it out. I shook it up and I wanted to use a stencil with this. So I put a pretty stencil over it, a crackle stencil, and I sprayed it and it come out in clumps. I mean, clumps. It wouldn't even go through the stencil area. So I put a palette knife on it and um, try to rub it around. Well, it went all the way under. Well, it, it, it was a disaster. So anyway, I have this little container of uh, embossing powders that's just excess, and I throw them all in there together. So that's what I did. I sprinkled it and let it dry overnight, and then I heat embossed it. So I got this type of a background. I've got a little um, distressed crayon on here as well. Uh, this is going to be part of the, the framing for the, the pictures here. This one uh, turned out much, much better <laughs> as planned. This was just something, I think I got it at um, Hobby Lobby, but you may be able to get it at, at uh, Michael's. It's a one-step crackle. It's an easier type of crackle. Um, and it makes a very small one. Well, after I had sprayed this, you know, the water reacts, so you get all that uh, pretty grunginess. And then, of course, I put some black crayon on there. So, and then I have tea bag to frame these two. And so that's that. I've got a stencil here. I wasn't sure if I was going to use the little dots or not. That's still in the making. I have these two paints here to use. The black is going to be my background. So that's what I got to get on to with my, my um, page here. Get everything out of the way. So... Our next page to work on. I still got to finish that one. <laughs> that one I just did. Uh, so this will be my next page. So we're going to get on here and we're going to, in my end screen. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get on here and I'm going to just put me a whole bunch of black over the back. It's just going to be my background. And uh, it'll be a little bit of it showing. So uh, it needs to. Just cover the whole thing. I don't know where it's going to be seen. I hope that's enough. This is pretty liquidy. <laughs> pretty liquidy. Hopefully it doesn't get... Oh my gosh. I splattered that stuff all over the desk. Oh, leave it to me. Leave it to me. I may have to clean that. Hang on. Okay. That was a total, total mess. I should have used some gesso on it. So that's what we're... <laughs> we're going to do now that that black i know tim said was very very runny and uh on purpose <laughs> so we're going to get on here and put us a big glob of gesso and what that's going to do it's going to seal our background it's going to give it tooth so paint or whatever you put on here it's going to stick to it plus i'm going to probably be you in using um, matte medium, matte gel medium here as a glue to put down my pieces. So it's going to get hit by a lot of runny stuff. 
so we're going to <laughs> see if we can head that off at the pass. <laughs> Plus, it, it went through and went all the way through to this other page, so let me finish this. All right, I've got that on there. I'm going to hit it with the heat gun and get that dry for the black to go on. Okay, I'm ready to go. Let's call that a lesson in what not to do. <laughs> I could have... I could have just stopped and started the video again, but I thought, mm, no, I want to, <laughs> to see that and see what happens. If that stuff had went all the way through, it soaked through the paper, and look, it's it's going on so much smoother. That is the wonder of gesso. Now, this is a white gesso. You can also get a clear gesso if you've had a color or um, collaging or something you've put on your page with glue something that's not gonna you know soak through automatically um then you can put the clear gesso on still see your your make underneath and you're able to uh build onto that so there there's white and clear so if you get out there and want to try some of this it's it's a good thing to have you can also with clear uh white gesso you can kind of use it through stencils and make your own um, kind of stencil designs with the white. You can also color it if you have some paint, um, some like this uh, paint here or some inkers, re-inkers. You can colorize it before you use it. Um, the only thing is it may be a little runnier than an actual texture paste or anything like that. So. That's the only problem with it. Oops, I was trying to get over here under that so I won't mess up. I put my papers here because I didn't mind with the gesso, but the black I don't want to be on the next page if I can help it. <laughs> so, that's going along right smoothly. I'm going to finish this up and hit it with the heat gun. Okay, this doesn't have a deep coverage, but I'm okay with that. It's just a background. It's just in case you see something through the cracks. Now, what I want to do here, and I'm not going to worry about, I don't know if I want to worry with ripping them or maybe, <laughs> but I'm going to rip these in strips. I, I want to be pretty uniform in size, though, like a, about an inch wide. So I guess if I rip, it gives me a more textural element to it <laughs> uh, i want to thank everybody for coming to visit today while i'm doing this um and uh for for sticking around and seeing what i got to do and hope you get a few little ideas from this or what not to do <laughs> as the uh the case may be uh miss kiyong she come up with this uh idea for us she said we could not use a napkin though it had to be toilet paper or paper towel and uh, she left it wide open from there though so that's good that's good because then we could work with it we could do what we could to make it uh, you know work for what we needed it's kind of hard to figure out what to do with a paper towel and toilet paper unless it's a background unless it's like um, collaged it's not too much you can do because there's no strength to it <laughs> there's no body to it that kind of thing all right i want some darker ones i need to do the edge of this let me go through here and make me enough of these strips to do my next step okay here is the plan i am going down with <laughs> these uh strips going this way the paper towel strips in that direction then I'm going to come in with these uh, book pages that I have sprayed and I'm going to weave them in and out, in and out. So it's not going to be easy and I don't want to pain you by having to watch me do this, but it's going to be something like that. Now the easiest way to do it would probably be to pull our paper towel pieces up like this and go in uh, one at a time like that that would be very easy and I think the best way to do it is to um, only glue 
Well, I can put a little dab of, uh, and this is matte gel medium. And back in the day, I got confused thinking it was something you would treat the end product and you wanted to seal it. Well, no, that was, that was wrong. Oh, and I think this is wrong too. I need a smaller brush, much smaller. Okay, this one will work much better. I got these brushes back in the day. <laughs> back in the, like 1991 or 1990, something like that. When I went to college, I took art. I didn't do anything with it. <laughs> I just took it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is put me a big old dab of glue under each one of these like that. And I probably would like to have a little bit under here just to hold it steady. And that might be all I need, that little dab. Because this is a paper towel. <laughs> so it's going to absorb. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I've got bounty or what I've got. <laughs> all right, so let's put this down here. And then we'll do the next layer. And then what we'll do, so it's all adhered, we're going to do another dab here for each one. So um, this paper towel will be stuck down to that. And it'll hold steady. Now if it's a little rough looking, it's not, if they're not all even at the top or the bottom, um, I'm not going to be mad at that because I want, you know, sort of a raggedy look. Um, not uniform, not matchy matchy. Oh, I pulled that one too far. Let me put hold my brush in my mouth and see how I'm fix that. <laughs> there we go. That one might be a little tight, but we're gonna make it work. <laughs> we're gonna make it work. Okay. The next step, I think, would be to pull these down. To every other one <laughs> every other one so and we also want to put a little dab under the piece that stays down as well just so because we're going to be putting something over this so we don't want to have it moving on us and uh paper towels pretty delicate you know so y you want to give it something to hold on to and that's what we got to do all right, like that. Then we're going to put we're going to put our piece of goodie here on top, right? Yeah, and we put I've missed a spot. <laughs> a few spots. I have to have a little bit here as well. You can tell I don't braid very often, but I also ooh may have gotten a little heavy-handed here. I also wanted to have a little bit of um, a little bit oh, shining through. Wasn't supposed to put any right there. <laughs> it's supposed to be right there. Uh, where's that little paper towel I had? Oh. You always want to have some paper towels handy because it's gonna it's it's mixed media. It's gonna get everywhere. There we go. That's what we want to do. Now you can you can see how that one that's going to be covered up right there. So I'm not worried about that spot I messed up on. Uh, I'm going to have one of my big tags over top of it. So there we go. That's coming along nicely. Now what I want to do is go down here. I'm going to just alternate, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a a dab here, a dab there. A dab here, a dab there. I don't want to get too dabby though, because <laughs> I want to, uh, I want to be able to uh, not see the glue through here. But I don't know if I really will to tell you the truth. Okay, and a dab there. All right, now I need a dab over top of that because that's where the paper is going to go. <laughs> have, you, have you caught on yet? Oh, the, the other part's not going to be, you know, hard at all. It's just where I'm going to put the tags together and throw them up here. But I wanted to kind of give you an idea of how to braid this 
if you wanted to do something, you can do this with all book page. It doesn't have to be <laughs> paper towel. That is part of my challenge. <laughs> but you could uh, make it with different uh, materials. Um, you could do you a braided page like this for maybe the background of one of your journals or the cover of your journal. Um, it's getting, you know, creative. You're and it's it's kind of interesting looking now. You want to get back in there and pat it down. If you've got one of those uh, spatulas that doesn't stick to anything, that might be good. But that's that's how we're going to do it. And we're just going to keep going. Now, this one, um, I need to come down. Every The one that has the paper on top of it, that's the one you want to pull down. I guess that's the easiest way for me to think to tell you. That's how I'm doing it in my head, anyway. So, that's how we're going to do it. Got to put a little dab of glue there. A little dab there. And this is pretty good stuff to hold with. This uh, gel medium. Let me tell you. Because <laughs> I, I really messed up on my first item here in my book. And um, that's what I did. I... Uh, Use gel medium on it, and boy, it stuck together. I almost lost everything I painted. Oh man, I was so disgusted with myself. I thought I'd read that that's what it did. I I used to watch Maremi Small Art, and you know, I tried to pick up things that she was doing and how she did it. Obviously, I didn't pay enough attention and <laughs> did it wrong. Oh, so wrong. Okay, there we go, and that's that's all she wrote. That's all you have to do. Just remember to pull your piece down that the paper is going across, like right here. So that goes up, that goes up, and you just have to remember put a dab of glue <laughs> just about everywhere. <laughs> so let me finish this, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm down to the last two. I thought you want to see me do those. So remember, pull it back where your paper is left. At the top. And you get in here and you just... And then we're going to go all the way down with this one because this is the last one. So you just want to seal it up so it will hold really good for you. All the way down. Make sure it sticks good. <laughs> it's really fun to do mixed media. Oh, oh I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> you uh, get in here and get dirty. My fingers are still dirty from the paper towel. Ep I mean, not paper towel. Um, the tea dyeing episode. <laughs> so I, I've still got a little bit of that <laughs> to uh, wear off of my fingernails. But it's getting there. It's getting there. All right, we're going to put this pretty piece down, and if you wanted to, while you're putting these down, you may think about doing your edges. I didn't think about doing that, but, you know, it depends on if you want them to stick up or to, um, you know, be kind of flappy looking or to go down. I It's in the journal, so I'm thinking down <laughs> is, the, is the correct answer, because... I don't know how much bulk your journals can take. Oh, crap, I did that again. Um, so, it's it's up to you how you wanted to approach this. And I'm going to go just a little over that edge there. And that one doesn't meet the edge. That one does, so... We want to put a little extra there. Hmm. I, I would have never thought <laughs> to use paper towel for this. That's what a challenge is good for. I've got another challenge that I do. It's Caroline's Craft Tree. So I've got hers to do this week as well. So I've got an idea what I want to do for it. I have to let it marinate in my head. I have all the words that I need. Um, and then I kind of... 
I have to figure what uh, I can do with each one of the words. If it'll work well with each other. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of like this. you got to figure out what will work, how it will work, if it will be successful. <laughs> That's the big one, if it'll be successful. And then we got to come back and put a big dab here for our paper to stick to. All right. It looks like I'm going to put the bigger end going that way. I'm going to go ahead and try to glue a little bit of my edge so it'll stick down over here as well. Push down. Then I'm going to get in here and put glue oops, here and here and here. So it's all it's all gluing. <laughs> So let me finish this up since I've got you going in the right direction, and I'll be back. All right, I set that aside to dry a bit more so we can finish these. And what I want to do is put them down on this paper and rip around it. So I'm going to do that real quick and try not to get them all messed up. These two here are my great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents. Great. I see which way. <laughs> okay. Mom, her mother, and then this is her, her parents, I believe. No, maybe they are great-grandparents. Okay. Obviously, I haven't looked at my family tree lately. So anyway, <laughs> this guy, he's James William, uh, da, 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 John Martin Thomas. I'm sorry, because two of them were in the Civil War together. Uh, one on one side of the family on mom's side and one on the other. So I get them kind of mixed up. Well, this guy, he was captured and taken out to... It's point something in Maryland. It's on the very point, right out in the ocean. And it, it was a prisoner of war camp out there. Well, he had fought in the war, and he had been shot. I don't know how he survived that camp, because hardly anybody did. But he, um, I think he was shot with three musket balls in, in his hip. And I have paperwork that talks about that. And, um, anyhow, so they dug those things out. I, I don't know if it was at this hospital or somewhere else, but, um, so he wore them around his neck, uh, in a little pouch and he, he wore them forever. I mean, he probably got buried in them. I have a little spot there that didn't get covered all the way. And, um, yeah. I mean, I, I, me and um, my friend, we went out that way because we were looking at uh, places where the Damrons had came over and that kind of stuff right above uh, Virginia and just happened to go there. And I took a picture of the sign and all that. I keep wanting to call it Point Pleasant, but I don't think that's what it was. Um but it's sad to, to think about what they had to endure and go through. I mean, I think they hardly ever got fed there. It was right on the point of the ocean. You couldn't escape. It was like on a peninsula sort of a thing. Mm. But anyway, he wasn't a very nice man afterward. But then, you know, when you go through something like that, <laughs> at least that's what my uncle told me. <laughs> he was... He wanted, this old guy, he wanted to, my uncle, my great uncle, to, to clean his spit tune one time. And he wouldn't do it. <laughs> so he hit him with his cane. My uncle wasn't appreciative of that. Um, I don't know if you, you see what I did here. I took a fingernail file and I jabbed it and rubbed it against there. Let me find one and do that. 
this is all it is. It's one of those emery boards. And you just take it and you rub it like that. And you just keep rubbing and digging. <laughs> and it, um, you can actually dig a little hole in it. Some people will like a little V-shaped hole. But that's a, a little textural thing that you can do. And I'm not going to ink it because that's going to take that white away. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to put this on here. And then we're going to put that down to our tea bag and then I'm going to rip around that he gets the same now this guy was John, uh, he's James William but he is a pulley and I did the same technique on the outside of his I believe they are the same the same distance on both sides. I believe their son married their daughter. That's how they're related. This guy was also in the Civil War. He's buried out at Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I've got to visit his grave. He has a military stone as well. I'm, I'm guessing he went out there to be in a hospital or something. I I don't know what drew him that way, but then his family had originally came from down in uh, Charlotte County, Virginia. So what I'm doing, I'm just ripping the outside edge of this as well. I think that's as good as I need to worry about. And then I'm going to put everybody down on the tag. Now I made that one a tag shape before I figured out what I was going to do with these um, backgrounds. So. <laughs> That's why <laughs> that one's cut that way. I think I may do something else with this one. Maybe I'll just cut the, the, the edge rounded or something. Just so it's not so harsh. And I don't have to have a cutter to do that. I just put my scissors on there and cut a little circle. That's all she wrote. And I don't... I'm not crazy about that white edge showing, so let me dull that down. Because I'm imagining this is going to stick up just a little bit. Alright, that's that one. How about this one? Oh yeah, it needs it too. Just a little bit. Uh, but when you do your family tree, you know, you find all kinds of crazy things out stuff these people had to deal with in life yeah I think I'm going to since I've treated these with I don't know that this is going to hold it here so I'm going to go in with the fabric tack or I could just go in with the, the gel medium but I'm gonna go ahead and go with fabric tack I know it'll dry fast and the reason I put the the mark these black marks here was because and I think he is on top because he's got a lot of empty below him. Um, so I don't block, you know, a lot of her. So that's, he's going down first. And I know this will hold. Don't have to worry a bit. Since it's kind of gooey, it, it's sort of a cushion as well. Okay, we're going to put that there like that. This guy, his grandfather, I believe came from England. I kept finding English information, but there's supposed to have been an Indian. You know, you always hear about the Indian, the chief or the princess or whatever. Supposedly, the story goes that this guy had an uh, an Indian, he was the Indian, or his mother or father was the Indian. Well, that isn't true, because look at his mustache. Indians didn't have facial hair. So, I have no clue where that story come from. Now, the guy that came over from England, it could be he married an Indian. I've got her name, but it sounds English. <laughs> so... You have all these stories that float around and you're trying to figure them out. And a lot of them are just mysteries. You'll never figure them out. Well, 
I should get back to the think outside the box challenge. <laughs> That's what this is all about. Um, you know, you get me talking about the family history and I'm just all over the place. Um, but anyhow, there's, I think there's, there's still four of us doing it. We, we had another girl and thought she would be able to pick up eventually and do it. So she still may. She's just had a lot of problems lately. Uh, family issues. So we gave her leeway to do it whenever she was able. Um, but anyhow, um, if you hit the hashtag, think outside the box, you'll see all the things that we have done. And this is our second round. We had a first round, and a, I believe this will be our second round. <laughs> and it's been exciting. <laughs> it's been kind of fun to do these. Okay, i got to get my book back over here. I'm still debating on whether I'm going to use these stencils. I'm still debating. All right, here's my book back again. I don't know if I'm going to use that glue or if I'm going to use the fabric tack to, to put them down. I believe I may. I may just go fabric tack instead of the gel medium. Oh, goodness. Can't get that on there. There we go. So, let us go ahead and do that because this is a material. So, I'm, I'm thinking fabric tack would do the trick. So we are going to go and put them kind of like that. Kind of like that. I think I was going to overlap them a bit and stagger them just a bit. Shame I'm covering up most of my work. <laughs> How awful. <laughs> See if I can get them a little tighter in here. No, I don't want to go over with that one. Let's see. Let's see if we can arrange them a little differently. Maybe that like that and that like that. It might be that I can just... Mm, I know I've already trimmed this, but maybe I can just do like that. And cut off that excess up there. And the bottom. Because I want to see some of my, my braided pretty rug here I've made. <laughs> I guess that's how you could term it. And then we'll get back in here with a little bit of this. I'm sure i got enough left. Alright, so we are going to... Yeah, I can see a, a bit more of my, my area there. And I'm trying to figure out which way I want to go about it. I think like that. So they're going to go down first. Let's let's do it. <laughs> my my glue's already ahead of me. It's already coming out. And I hope everybody has been doing well and having good health and good weather and uh, good planting seasons. Who who plants out there? I know Celeste does. She's been going to town with her garden. And I'm not saying flower garden. She's got food. She's planting food. <laughs> uh, and it looks so good. I see it on her, her Instagram a lot. Woodland Ex Inspired. It's Woodland Inspired. And it, it pretty much is. It looks like she's got beautiful acreage and everything there. Oh, goodness. All right. So that one's down pretty good. Let me go to this one. Yeah, some of the ladies that's in our um, our Think Outside the Box challenge, we wanted to do a challenge, and there wasn't too many out there to do, so we made up our own. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy made it up. Tommy, that is uh, paper crafting with Miss Tommy. She is the one that came up with this. It's very beginning. We all jumped on board, got excited, and challenged ourselves to try to meet everybody's prompt. <laughs> and they have a stipulation, you know, 
you got to use this, and you can't do that. <laughs> that's usually how it works out. So that's about what we have been doing. Um, we've been working on that lately. I want to pull that out. And we've been enjoying each other's and what each person will come up with is pretty interesting to see how everybody's brain works okay now I have a few little goodies oh <laughs> there's where that black paint went on there I have a few little goodies here that I'm going to put on here and uh, I don't think I actually need to use any of this paint it looks like I've got enough showing that was one of the other things I was going to do. Let me cap that real quick. And I'm going to cut out a couple of the, these little things to put on here because they look, they look rustic. So let's do that. Let's cut that down. And we're going to use that one. We're going to use Joy in the Journey because... I feel like it is a journey through life to learn about your family. And so we just got to cut our little pieces off and stick it down. Okay. I don't think I need more of those. I may put this reddish one on here. I like that with the numbers. I wondered about stamping on here, um, but I think it's got enough going on, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I think it's got enough. <laughs> so we're going to do something like this. We're just going to put a little number and a phrase in one corner like that, and then we're going to put joy in the journey underneath of it oh am I gluing off screen again sorry I'm sad about that all right like that and then we're going to have this one that we're going to put in this lower corner I think you can see down here yeah we're going to kind of put that one right here I believe it's kind of rustic looking I'm going to show you a little bit of something that I did the other day. I always do. <laughs> try, to, try to show you stuff that I've made and done. Um, are we done with this? I think we are. I think we're done. I mean, it was fun. I don't think I need anything else. I may want to shut it and put a book on it so everything glues down good. But this is my Think Outside of the Box Challenge. Let me get those out of there. Uh, and I used paper towel. Did I do it, Kim? Did I do it? I used paper towel. And I, I didn't use a napkin. <laughs> I think that was your stipulation. Um, but I, I don't think you would have used a paper towel to braid and to become a background well you, you wouldn't use it to braid I know you could use it for a background but I hope that, that did the trick and everybody got an idea from that it's kind of interesting looking so everybody have a great day I hope you uh, come back and visit again oh uh, I was going to show you my tickets sorry I almost jumped out of there didn't I but I did these uh, art deco kind of tickets the other day and uh, here's another set. And I thought they turned out really good. And uh, I, I couldn't figure out where I had got the mess on the back. Because, see, I had to cover this entirely. But I did some stamping here. But I got blue and stuff. What well, was where I was had stamped on that one piece of paper. And a lady's over top to off stamp. Oh, I remember not to do that again. Okay, anyhow. Everybody have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Come back and visit again sometime. Bye.